Russia's S-400 Triumph air defense system is widely touted as the best in the world, and it's also subject to more disinformation and misinformation than probably any other weapon system on the planet. But despite not living up to the practically supernatural reputation it's gotten from, well, Russian fanboys on Reddit, the S-400 is still one of the most capable air defense systems in service today. So let's talk about what it really is and what it's actually capable of. Contrary to popular understanding, the S-400 isn't really one system, but rather a collection of them, some of which have roots that go all the way back to the 1960s. Officially, development on the S-400 began in 1993, but just about 70 to 80 percent of its hardware was a direct transfer from the much older S-300 that Russia still has in service. And among those transferred systems was an upgraded and improved iteration of the Nebo-M radar. Now, the Nebo-M is a very capable radar array. In fact, it's not one array, but rather three of them, two low frequency and one high frequency arrays. Now that's really important because low frequency radar arrays can often detect the presence of and even track stealth fighters, but they aren't able to provide a weapons grade lock. They can't target them. Now high frequency arrays often can't detect or track stealth fighters at all until they're very close, but once they can, they can actually target them. So by coupling a low frequency array with a high frequency one, you can orient your target targeting radar array directly at that stealth fighter, so the instant it's close enough to target, you've already got a bead on it. Now, Russia's Nebo-M uses the Nebo-SVU and the Protivnik-G arrays in lower frequency bands, but then it also uses the Gamma-S1, which is an S and X band array, for targeting duties. Now, according to Russia's own documents, the Nebo-M array used in the S-400 could detect the presence of an F-117 at a range as far as 350 kilometers, or about 217 miles. But, according to them, in a jamming environment, that range would be cut to about 72 kilometers, or just 45 miles. But it's important to note that they said detect and not target, meaning their lower frequency arrays would be able to detect the presence of these aircraft as they close with the arrays, but it wouldn't be able to target them quite yet. Now, the F-117 Nighthawk is a stealth aircraft, but it's a much more dated one than the ones the U.S. employs today, and its radar cross-section is something in the order of 30 times bigger than the F-22 Raptor, with the F-35 falling somewhere in between. According to independent expert analysis, the Nebo-M array would be able to target the F-35 at a range of about 20 miles, which is honestly pretty good, but not quite good enough to protect the S-400 from advanced anti-radiation or radar hunting missiles like the AAR-GM-ER, which have a range of about 60 miles. But that's not really the biggest threat to the S-400 and its Nebo-M radar. Low-altitude cruise missiles are also a huge problem for this and really all air defense systems. When launched in high volume, cruise missiles can hug terrain to mask their approach, and by the time they're close enough to target, there would be too many of them closing with the air defense system to intercept them all. It's also important to remember that detection ranges and targeting ranges are dictated by the radar return of the target, but intercept range is also dictated by the capability of the interceptor launched, and the S-400 carries a variety of them for different jobs. The further away a fighter is when you launch an interceptor at it, the more opportunity that fighter has to employ countermeasures and use aerobatic maneuvers to try to shake the missile. So you usually do want to wait until they're fairly close to launch. But that, of course, raises big problems when it comes to anti-radiation missiles. Russia's S-400 Triumph really is a very capable air defense system, but it also benefits from the public's tendency to overestimate the capability of all air defense systems in general. No air defense system is successful 100% of the time, but the S-400 also benefits from Russia's intentionally misleading practice of only disclosing successful tests. So as far as the public's concerned, the S-400's only been tested a handful of times and they were all absolutely successful. When in truth, when it comes to military testing of systems like this, if all of your tests are successful, 
That means that you're not actually using challenging enough testing parameters. The intent in testing is to fail, to find your outer limits, and to continue to improve your systems. The truth is, the S-400 is probably just about as capable as America's Patriot Air Defense System, but it benefits from a very enthusiastic crowd with a vested interest in making Russia seem more capable than it really is. 